killer pose. Legs fully stretched. Ankles crossed like lottery fingers. One of my pillows to bolster your backrest. Kimono half open. Freckled forehead, scowling at a screen. I offer you another cuppa. I'll tell you look, you look fit. Because you do. Turquoise glitter on your left big toe. Hair in the loosest of buns. Postpone the formalities. Reconstruct the landscape. As long as I'm with you, I'm moving forward. Legs fully crossed now. Dress for the camera. Handheld mirror and the final touches before hi, I'm Maria. Eyes big as bludgers, you find it beneath your kimono. Concealed with a magenta spine, the book to crown your glory. Names that paint the universe with uniballs. Precious words immortalised like Egyptian monarchs. Your name, a two's up. The bubbles in the seki. And now forward and forever are intertwined like earphones. Evening everybody, my name is Matt Abbott, welcome to this week's Insta Session, uh, number 39 I think it is, oh um, god stop fiddling, oh, my hair looks terrible because it's locked down isn't it, um, I'm really excited about tonight's session, uh, tonight I'm being joined by Charlotte Lunn, um, Charlotte is a poet, bookseller and workshop, workshop facilitator living with a chronic illness, uh, she's from Derby, um, her debut collection Metamorphosis is due for publication with Verve next month. Um, she recently became a guest poetry facilitator with the Derbyshire Writing School and offers mentoring and editing services. I've seen her doing loads of workshops during lockdown, which is fantastic. Um, and yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing what Charlotte shares. So let's have a butcher's, see if I can work this. This is a bit that always flummoxes me because I don't know how to do it. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Give me two secs. Sorry. Ooh, I can't see Charlotte on there yet, so I'll read another very, very short poem. But don't worry, when I say short, I mean like dead short. This is from my kids' poetry collection. There was once a teacher from Fife who tried to eat soup with a knife. He coughed and wheezed and spluttered and sneezed and the soup went all over his wife. There you go. Let's have a look. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, I'm looking forward to tonight. I can't believe it's number 39 already. Um, I've said this a few times, like when I first started doing these, I genuinely thought I was going to do like 10, maybe 12. Uh, and yeah, 39. So I'm aiming for 50, which would finish on the 22nd of June, which is apparently a day after we stop all social distancing completely, despite having been in the shit show for over a year. It's just going to go like that, apparently, um, which I find hard to believe. Uh, I'll just drop Charlotte a quick DM on Twitter, see if she's all right. Uh, uh, uh. And then, if not, I shall read another quick poem. In fact, I'll just read another quick poem, because I'm sure it should be coming very soon. Okay. That's a really long one, can't be reading that. Uh, Sonnet for E. Pellici. This is my favourite East London calf that I'll probably not visit for a while. A cockney Italian concoction. This century old snug on Bethnal Green Road. Woe betide you take the veggie option. Tongue tucked in cheek at this family abode. Men betray their roots with cappuccino. Find solace from the city's morning rush. Others flick through papers like a beano, whilst banter brings you breakfast with a blush. Jesse Wallace beams above the punters. Millennials on mobiles keep it stum. Neville makes you chuckle as he chunters. Anna gliding and smiling as she hums. Warm as a jacuzzi, sharp as a knife. Pelicis preserving East London life. Right, I'll have another quick look. And if I can't see Charlotte on here, I shall... Send a, a quick DM. No. Right, I'll be a sec. Da, 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 da. Bit of a scary thought that I don't know if I can cope package them. Yeah, no, I know. I can't I can't honestly imagine it going uh to twenty first of June and everything just being normal. I just can't get made around it. Bang, sent a little quick message there. Um, so, yeah, I've got another 11 left after this, which is absolutely mad. Got some awesome guests lined up. Uh, next week is um, Penny Pepper, which I'm really excited about. After that, I've um, got Liam Xavier. And then after that, Kat Hepburn. Oh, here we are. Charlotte has joined. So I shall invite her.
Exciting. Turn me volume up. 20 people watching. This is good. Nice. Just waiting for it to connect. Hello, you all right? Hey, I'm good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, buzzing, thanks. Yeah, yeah, nice to see you. Lovely to see you. I'm excited to be here. I'm used to, like, clicking on at 7.30 to watch myself. So it's really strange being in the hot seat, but really nice. Cool. Good. Oh, well, thank you. I'm glad you've been watching them. I'm glad you've been finding them useful. Like, it's nice to know. Um, I absolutely love doing it. It's buzzing. Like, there were a little time after about 20 when I, like, I, I'd get nervous about it or whatever, but now it's just really fun. Um, so, yeah. Have you had a good day? Yeah, it's been lovely. It's been strange weather, though, hasn't it? <laughs> Hailstone and then sun and then hailstones and then sun. Like, I can't get mid around it. It's mad. It's bonkers. I'm trying to convince Maria that it's not just like normal Yorkshire weather and that it is like weird <laughs> everywhere because we just moved from London. She's like, but no, it's uh, yeah, it's been mad everywhere, hasn't it? So, um, so you've been really busy, haven't you, during lockdown? Like you've been doing lots of online workshops and mentoring and stuff. I have. It's been absolutely awesome. I think. It's strange, actually, because I know lockdown's been quite naff for a lot of people. But yeah, I've like really enjoyed it. It's given me the time to actually focus on my freelance stuff, um, do workshops, focus on my writing, actually get my book published because it gave me the time to send it off to Viv. So yeah, it's been it's been amazing. Yeah, like I actually looked down on lockdown one with a bit of fondness, apart from obviously the horrendous scenes that we saw in hospitals and you, you know not not blind to that but like in terms of your personal circumstance yeah i know i know um it's, what about you? But, have you been finding it uh i've just been stupidly busy to be honest like it, mainly my own problems that i'm creating for myself but uh, <laughs> yeah it's it's uh, yeah I suppose we're lucky i mean i've said this to a few people i suppose we're lucky as poets it's like the most transferable art form in terms of going online i guess yeah 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 so the collection, um, how long had you been working on it before lockdown? Like, was it sort of halfway through and you were struggling to get it over the line or? Um, I think I'd already sort of got it done by the lockdown. It just needed to go through like a really thorough editing process. Um, right. So I sort of went to verb with it and I was like, hey, I was like, I've got something I might want you to have a little look at. And they were like, have you shown it to anyone yet? And I was like, oh no, just me. <laughs> and they're like, okay, send it away to a handful of people, get some feedback on it, and then come back to us with it. And that's exactly what I did. I went to a few of my poetry friends and I was like, will you look at my manuscript for me, please? And they were like, yeah. And it just went through such a rigorous editing process for like another month. And then I finally got to send it off, which was good. Nice. And so the lockdown just gave you the time to maybe spend a bit more time and send it to people and yeah 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 absolutely yeah i really got to dedicate proper time to it because obviously i was on furlough from work so i just like sat down every day in front of my computer and i was like i'm gonna look at this every day <laughs> that's cool that's nice <laughs> so it's out next month so next month is literally yeah it's a month today exactly it's so exciting and nerve-wracking at the same time <laughs> yeah as soon as you click like send on that final proof you suddenly like ah i know it's absolutely mad because i'm i'm literally um in the typesetting bit at the moment so uh stuart's gonna send it over to me when he's done the typesetting and i get to do a little checkeroo before we send it off so then it'll be done it'll be out there <laughs> it'll be real be in the world yeah exciting it's exciting it is it's how fun. um how long have you been writing poetry Oh, that's a good question. Uh, how many years? A, a long time, a very long time. Um, and then I went to uni back in 2011, I think it was, and I went to go study creative writing because I decided that I really wanted to sort of um, focus on it properly. And that's when yeah. I just sort of fell more in love with poetry, I think, and then continued to nurture it after that. Yeah. Whereabouts did you go? Uh, Derby. Oh, nice. Cool, cool. Yeah. Derby's got a great scene as well, hasn't it? It seems like over the last few years it's had a great scene. It does. It's it's absolutely amazing. And it'd be great to see Knights get back up and running um, once we've got a bit more back to normal, I think. 
them nights word wise on a Friday night when the open mic's still going and it's five to midnight and everyone's just um, <laughs> playing like, them nights. Charlotte running off to get a train. That was fun. yeah. To live in Chesterfield uh, to go get the train. Oh man, yeah. No, I'm looking forward to that as well. I'm looking forward to that. Well, do you fancy sharing as a poem? Yes, um, I've got a, a nice short one to get us started, and it's called oh. Sociopath. He had to go to bed with himself, think of all the things he had done. That's why he exploited the spaces till there were none. Whittling the meniscus of mistresses lined up like paper chain ladies, because they've not seen the creature that knows so avidly how to celebrate tears. An obdurate thing you have been, what will they write in your eulogy? Will anyone be there? Nice. Cool. I like that. <laughs> I'm so glad. It's one of my <laughs> one of my angry poems. <laughs> you got to have an angry poem in there. So it probably comes across quite gracefully. I think people have said to me, in past performances, they're like, I can't tell her you're angry because you just come across so sweet. And I'm just like, yeah, there's anger in there. <laughs> no, no, yeah, it's definitely in there. It's definitely in there. It's, it's that, like, that calm, like, steely anger, that, like, it's like yeah, straight to the... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So the title, Metamorphosis, um, do you want to tell us about that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, I was so sort of set on the title because I had a few people say to me they're like oh have you thought about changing the titles when I was going through the editing process and I was like oh no I'm really determined with this one so it's got a few um sort of inspirations behind it one is um I absolutely love the artist Salvador Dali and he did a painting um called Metamorphosis which is absolutely beautiful and his work's just so dreamlike and surreal which I absolutely love um so it was partly because of that I also wrote a poem back at uni called Metamorphosis which is actually in the collection and that was about the sort of transformation of the seasons which is very much kind of what the book goes through itself it's almost like a, a transformation um through abuse and trauma um, to get in towards the recovery stage. So um, it just felt like a very apt title in that sense as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, it's really intriguing. It's a great title. That's why I wanted to ask about it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank I'm glad you took your guns. <laughs> Shall I read another poem? Yeah, sure, yeah. Cool. I'll go for it. So this one is called on Valentine's and it's actually about how horrible smears are, which many people will know. Gynecology decides to take a holiday and postpone your appointment every year. Hospital letter reads, you're not getting any, it's time for your smear. And there's nothing worse than another woman thinking she knows your body just because she's a woman. I'm sorry, but you're not acquainted with my cervix, and if you were, it wouldn't let you in for tea, let alone male doctor called Poscopies. It's my first time. My vagina is not a circus act. Questions asked, your legs in stirrups. Where do you live? Where do you work? What are you doing today? I wasn't prepared for this inquisition. Stretch for spectators in awkward positions. The meaning of the screening isn't to watch me like a movie, but douse me in iodine, swab, then release. <laughs> Great poem. That's brilliant. I cannot even begin to imagine how awkward and uncomfortable that is. Oh my God, it's so grim. And I wrote that after my first time. Um, unfortunately, my first time was like when I was like 22. So I was much younger than normal women would be. And there must have been about five people in the room, and I was just like, "Is this necessary?" Like, you know, you people in here, all staring at my privates. <laughs> yeah, I, I just, I don't know. I, I just, yeah, I feel, I feel sorry for anyone who has to go through that. Like, I know, I know, obviously, it's so important, but mm. they could just make it so much nicer, though. I think I had a really horrible nurse at the time, and she was like oh, what are you worried about? It's just like having sex. And I was like, what? <laughs> I was just like, is it? <laughs> this is so 
<laughs> yeah, this is it. There must be better ways to do it, and there must be, like you say, just able to make it. And also the small talk. Like I feel bad getting like with a small talk and I'm getting my hair cut. Never mind that. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, oh. Oh, you're just like, oh, what are you doing with the rest of your day? And I'm just like, what? Like, can't. I just can't. <laughs> yeah. Well, such a needed poem, as Rashika says. Like, such a needed poem. To be fair. Oh, thank um, you. That's, yeah, it's really important to speak. That's what I love about poetry. Just It's so important to speak about that. And I guess most people who have a smear would just not want to talk about it and just completely forget about it until the next time. So I guess it's really important for you to actually, yeah. That's the thing, because, like, although it was an awful experience, it's still something that I think is very important that people go out and do. But I'm just hoping to spread more awareness around it and that not everybody will have as horrible ex as experience as I had, so. Yeah. Well, Beryl, uh, do you want to share it? Do you fancy sharing it? <laughs> yes, yeah, I do. I've stumped you, haven't I? He's just like, what do we do? No, <laughs> How do we move on <laughs> from that? <laughs> cool. Um, so the next one is called The Child That Does Not Exist. I apologise for my uncertainty. Sometimes my body forgets to bleed, the potential my womb can exhibit. I become sceptical as speculums only make me more tense. Perhaps I'm selfish. Think there's more to this life than you. Maybe you'd be everything, feed on all my doubts. But you have to understand, I'm still casting it all out. The sawdust and the splinters of human entropy raised by him without the self that led to therapy. I'm working hard and being full, so one day if we meet, you'll leave your home inside me and land upon your feet. You'll feel a mother's love the way that it should be, won't topple into strangers whose hearts don't know to beat. Oh, beautiful, gorgeous poem. Ooh. And the, ra the range of the three poems as well, to be fair, like, Awesome. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I tried just to really, my yeah. selection for you. Thanks. <laughs> um, so, are there any, obviously, like, when you do a gig, there's, like, you go to ones that you share, like, fairly regularly, and like you said, there's one that you wrote back at uni, so you're obviously very well acquainted. Are there any poems in there that, like, barely anybody's seen that you're almost a bit, like, more at sharing? Like, in a good way, but, like, do you know, you know them ones that you keep really close to your chest? I think there probably is a lot that I haven't performed but mainly probably more because I'm quite a short poem writer so not all of them are appropriate for spoken word things they're more just yeah. like things that you can enjoy reading in your hands I think um but yeah I think it'll be nice for people to see those when it comes out in book form yeah definitely because like you say when you're at a night like word wise or whatever you do feel the pressure to share the more so I guess this is just giving you a space to put the gentler, quieter poems in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, cool. Ah, oh, so it's a uh, such an exciting feeling, isn't it? I can't wait. Are there, any, are there any lockdown poems that I've snuck in at the last minute through the back door? There isn't, you know. I was really strict with myself. I was like, no, I'm gonna cut myself off. I stopped writing it at the beginning of last year, I think. Um, but I've started working on some new stuff, which I'm really excited about. Um, so I think I mentioned I've, um, I suffer with chronic illness. I've got fibromyalgia um, and I've just, a lot of poems have just started to pour out of me about sort of the experience that I've been going through with that. And I really think that I want my next collection to be about chronic illness and that sort of journey. So I think that'll be quite exciting and you're the first person yeah. I told that, so <laughs> yeah, it oh, is wow. first. I'm on it. Um, am I right in thinking that it was fairly recently that you had your diagnosis, like your formal diagnosis? Yeah, it was. It was only like, gosh, it was back end of February. So I've just been coming to terms with that over the past month or so, and it's just been crazy. <laughs> yeah, I can't, yeah, I can't imagine, yeah. I think poetry is really like helps there. I mean, poetry has just been a, such a huge thing in my life. I mean, when I went sort of through the trauma that I explore in Metamorphosis, it was there for me then. It was there for me through the pandemic, and it's been there for me um, through my chronic illness as well. And I think 
poetry is always going to be so much better than any therapy I can go to you and any medication yeah. I can have so yay for poetry <laughs> well especially when access to certain like therapy services on the NHS the waiting lists can be like 18 months plus can't oh. they so exactly it is yeah not you're like no i need it now <laughs> i know yeah well all right 60 quid an hour then no <laughs> like yeah no i know not that like what i know it's well it's 10 to i mean obviously we can go on a little bit later we don't have to stop dead on at eight o'clock because there's no bake-off on at the moment but okay. um just to give you a rough idea of what time okay. uh if there's anything you definitely want to share okay i'll read the one that i definitely want to share and if we've got time i'll squeeze in another one but we'll see how sure. we go um, so this one's called Carousel. Time moves forward, heedless to hiatus, feeding us to the years we are not yet ready for. These bodies, when for overfilled plates, pivot in tandem lock fingers, suffocate, tapping on and off to the splutter of bridge meets river. Archways we will not endure bring us to places where our eyes are taken from us. On the route with the delicate flowers whose name I forgot. Lost signal grants us a siesta on the stairs. Oh, that was gorgeous. Wow. <laughs> oh, I'm looking forward to revisiting these. Like, yeah, that was really, I love that. Yeah, you can pre order them now if you want one. Yeah. <laughs> free, free UK P and P if you pre-order through Verve. Exactly. Get exactly. on it. You ready? None of the time is the nonsense. Um, yeah, that was that was beautiful. Such lovely imagery in there. That was great. Yeah, I really enjoyed writing that one. That was one of my um, latest ones that I actually wrote. So, so, so um, how do you how do you know when a and obviously it's a ridiculous question, but how do you know when a poem's finished? Like, how are you able to walk away? Do you have like a very disciplined approach to it, or do you sort of try and go on instinct, or does it depend on the poem? Or I think I think it entirely depends on the poem. Um, sometimes I can be like really vain, and after a first draft, I'm like, "This is done. This is amazing." <laughs> And then like other times I can just be like going at things into like fifth draft and I'll be like, oh my God, I need to let this go. So yeah, I think it does entirely depend on the poem. And sometimes I'll sort of take some space from things and go back to them and have a fiddle. But um, yeah, it's a different process per poem, I think. What about you? What do you do? Oh God, don't ask me. I've got no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I I suppose like your part of it is gut instinct, but I'll do really stupid stuff like if it's say if it's two hundred and thirty four words, I'll force myself to cut it down to two hundred. Yeah. Or stuff like that because it's like once I've done that, then I can walk away. Like I know that sounds really geeky, but I'm a bit OCD and like. Oh. And so yeah. sometimes like you just have to make a rule and stick to it. Like, right, it's done now. Um, and it's quite usually it works. I think, but I don't know. Or like Charles Bukowski, I know, I know that he's very problematic, but he once said that you can't, you should never look at a poem for 18 days. Once you've written the first draft, don't look at it at all for 18 days. And then wow. you can look at it with like semi-fresh eyes. Brilliant. Bukowski's Which, great, to be fair. I do like Bukowski. Yeah, no, he is. I just, I, I realised that if he came out today, he'd very much be cancelled straight away, first open mic. Yeah, but, he is a bit of a misogynist, to be fair. But... Yeah, of course. But like, <laughs> yeah. But like, that 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 nugget always stayed with me. I thought eighteen days. Cause, you know, like, when you look at a draft like six months later, when you actually forget forget even writing it, and you're like, oh, it's come from. When did I write it? Yeah, it's like writing to a stranger, like sending postcards to a stranger, isn't it? It's weird. Mm. Anyway, sorry, I'm waffling. No, um, fine. Um, well, yeah. Do, do you fancy sharing another one? Yeah, I can. I can read you my final poem of the evening. Um, so this is called I Sieve Through Your Truths. I sieve through your truths as you feign decency. An obstinate 60-something with more ways than years of solid matter to break through. Hawking couldn't have lectured on you. A conference for my mind, maker inclined to project. Tumultuous back and forths when I'm four. Streams of tissues. Petrichor. If you shred my introductions to the sound of your solipsism, they may sound sweeter. 
Just a tip for the next time you say they'll eat me alive. Get in line and bring a spoon. Binge on your jeans and fill up on you. Oh, fantastic. Very nice. Very <laughs> nice. Oh, what a, what a trailer for the book. Brilliant. <laughs> so um, are you? Are, are there any new poets that you've discovered through Verve? Like I mentioned, whenever I have a Verve poet on, I always sort of mention it like the family, like the Verve family sort of thing. Um, are there any new writers that you've discovered that you're excited by? Oh, yes. Um, Rushka is one of them. Absolutely love her. I listened into her IG live with you guys a while back and I was like, oh my gosh, she's amazing. And I yeah. just, she's like my soul sister now. She's so cool. Um, and I did already know um, Scarlett Ward, but we got to know each other a bit better. And we did like an IG live a month ago or so and got to know each other, which was really nice. Um, and I'm hoping to do one with um, Betty at some point as well. But yeah, like the Verve family are just amazing and just so insanely talented. And I've, I've been reading Verve poetry books for such a long time and I just knew it was the publisher for me, I think. Yeah, yeah. And to be fair, like, you know, Burning Eye books are awesome and Outspoken Press, like Bad Betty, there's so many beautiful many good ones. Presses, like, yeah, but like like as somebody who was published on Verve, must like I, I love the community and that just that feeling. It's nice, isn't it? Exactly. And Stuart says lovely things about you as well. He was like, Matt's so nice, he's like, you'll have a great time this evening. Oh well that's nice to know. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, yeah, well, uh, I'm I'm really excited to see it come out. I know you're doing a launch with Sophie Sparrow, aren't you? Yes, uh, so that's on Friday the 28th of May, and you can purchase tickets on Eventbrite. That'll be on um, Zoom, so I'm really excited. We were trying to figure out whether we should do it as, like, a meeting or a webinar, but we thought it would be really nice to see people's faces, so I think we're going to keep it as a meeting. Sounds good. Yeah, yeah, I, I can't imagine doing it like a webinar. That seems a bit... Uh, yeah. Bit disconnected. Um, although what? I imagine I'll get on, I'll see everybody's faces and I'm like, Whoa. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Spotlight on myself, boom. Um, what's been the weirdest lockdown gig that you've done or workshop that you've done, do you think? Oh, weirdest lockdown gig or workshop? Or like, furthest from reality, for example. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't know if you, like, I've seen some people do poetry workshops in like New York or whatever. Mm, I did do um, I did like a one-to-one -one with somebody who is living in Italy um, like they're English um, but yeah they're they're all the way over in Italy and I just thought it was amazing and we had to like work out the time difference to sort of get it sorted but I was like we'd never have done this if it was in real yeah. life the fact that we can do this is just so cool and I just felt so in awe that somebody from Italy wanted to work with me. I was like, what is this? Hey, Sinead, do you think you'll keep doing the workshops and the one-on-ones and stuff, like even without any social distancing? Um, it's, it's hard to say, I think, because the pandemic is, it's really, it's such a scary thing. Um, I think doing things virtually is, has helped to make things really safe. And in a sense as well, people can come from all over the place and it is really accessible for everybody as well. Um, I would like to do in-person things, um, but yeah, I think I'll be a bit nervous about it. I'm nervous about just integrating back into society, I think. I know, I know. I in-person gigs and events without a doubt, but I, I actually think that the workshops and stuff like that, I, I sort of prefer it online, to be honest. Mm, I think yeah. uh, just, just like doing it in person, you're like, just gonna be like how do i teach in person i don't know uh, anymore <laughs> yeah mad in it but it's been wonderful seeing you like obviously you know i've noticed you doing offering the the workshops and a mentor and it's been wonderful to see and so many peak poets have adapted so well and so i feel like the community is even tighter now because we've all sort of turned to each other so is and like and it's amazing that you as right out loud is doing so many amazing things as well like the rachel long workshop was absolutely amazing and i'm so oh, she was great wasn't she yeah and i can't wait for yeah. the caroline bird one as well it's gonna be ace i know it sold out in like 12 hours i can't oh. get me around it it's just like, boom. <laughs> told me about it. i was like yes get a ticket 
Yeah, yeah, I'm hoping to do more stuff with Write Out Loud and then the label. We've got a, we're about to announce a massive project, so it's all systems go. But um, so lovely to spend Thanks some time with you. For having me, it's been amazing. It's been lovely chatting. No, oh, thanks for giving up your time and sharing your work. Very, I'm very excited. It's exciting. Cool. Well, um, take care and uh, enjoy the madness that is seeing your book come out. And uh, yeah, hopefully I'll see you soon. We'll stay in touch. Take care. Cool. Take Bye. care. See you later. Bye, everybody. Bye.